Hello and welcome to Talking Really. And here's the story of last week. This is uh, Making the Rounds and it came out on the 23rd of January. Uh, it's a big story. Uh, this is the story of Errol Graham. Errol Graham uh, died after starving himself because the DWP wrongly stopped his benefits. Now, why is this, this story significant? Well, it's become big because there's also another story that I'm going to be doing, and it's related to this one. There is a actually an inquiry now. Uh, the the man, a disabled man, starved to death after the DWP wrongly stopped his out of work benefits. The story here is in Disability News. Errol Graham weighed just four and a half stone, and when his body was found by bailiffs who had knocked down his front door in order to evict him, he had just a couple of out-of-date tins of fish left in his flat. DWP civil servants had failed to seek further medical evidence from his DP, as they normally do. They don't bother. Just as in many other tragic cases, uh, sparked repeated calls for an independent inquiry into links between the deaths of claimants and the actions and failings of DWP. Assistant Coroner Dr Elizabeth Didcock, who heard the inquest into his death, was told that the DWP stopped Graham's employment and support allowance and backdated that decision to the previous month after making two unsuccessful visits to his home to ask why he had not attended a face-to-face -face work capability assessment on the 31st of August in 2017. The inquest heard that it was standard DWP's procedure to go ahead and stop the benefits of a claimant marked as vulnerable after two failed safeguarding visits, which I find horrific. DWP somehow managed to stop an ESA payment that had been due to be credited to his bank account on 17th of October, the same day it made the second unsuccessful safeguarding visit. DWP own rules state that it should make both safeguarding visits before stopping the benefits of a vulnerable claimant. Why? Before Graham lost his ESA entitlement, his housing benefit was also stopped. His family said that he had also been found ineligible for personal independent payment, deprived of all financial support and experiencing significant mental distress and unable or unwilling to seek help, he slowly starved to death. He was 57 years old. His body was discovered on the 20th of June 2018 when bailiffs arrived to evict him for non-payment of rent. His benefits had been stopped even though he had been receiving incapacity benefit and then ESA for many, many years as a result of enduring mental distress. And he, and he had in that time also been sectioned, which is where you are put into a, a secure mental facility as part of a court action. He had also told DWP on an ESA form three years earlier that he could not cope with unexpected changes, adding, upsets my life completely, feel under threat and upset, cannot deal with social situations, keep myself to myself, do not engage with strangers, have no social life, feel anxiety and panic in new situations. The DWP told the inquest that because Graham had not seen his GP since 2013 and there was no recent ESA questionnaire explaining his level of impairment, 
he had been asked to attend a WCA, but he had failed to attend. But the inquest also heard that he had not been asked to complete an ESA questionnaire, even though he had previously completed and returned them, with assistance for previous claims. Letters were sent out in September and October 2017, asking why he had failed to attend the WCA, followed by a telephone call, a text message and the two visits, but he failed to respond to any of them. The assistant coroner said there's simply not sufficient evidence as to how he was functioning. However, it is likely that his mental health was poor at the time. He does not appear to have been having contact with any other people and he did not seek help from his GP or any agencies as he had done previously. She concluded the narrative verdict delivered last June that the safety net that should surround vulnerable people like Errol in our society has huge holes in it. She said he needed the DWP to obtain more evidence from his GP at the time his ESA was stopped to make a more informed decision about him, particularly followed um, the failed safeguarding visits. The uh, consultant psychiatrist had told the inquest that Errol was vulnerable to life stresses and that he was likely that this loss of income and housing were the final and devastating stresses that had significant effect on his mental health. She decided not to write a Regulation 28 report demanding changes to DWP safeguarding procedures to prevent further deaths because the department insisted that it was already completing a review of its safeguarding, which was supposed to finish last autumn. DWP had promised that her that it would listen to clients and to those representing them and ensure that the DWP were focused on support and safety for vulnerable people. Disability News Service has actually contacted Dr. Didcock to ask if she was aware of the many previous deaths, including two reported by coroners that have been directly linked to similar DWP failings. And um, unfortunately, she was not available for comment. There have been a whole raft of people who have, in similar uh, circumstances, uh, suffered this fate. And these include Stephen Carey, Jody Whiting, Mark Wood, Paul Donaghy, Michael O'Sullivan, David Barr, and a woman known only as Miss D.E. This latest case has only emerged because DNS was in contact by Alison Turner, the partner of Errol Graham's son, who put questions to DWP at the inquest and has fought for justice for him over the last two years. Although the family could not afford a lawyer to represent them at the inquest, DWP paid for one of the country's leading barristers to defend its failures. Someone should be held accountable for it. If DWP hadn't stopped his money, he would still be here today. Definitely. The family have yet to receive an apology from DWP and one civil servant who gave evidence to the inquest even insisted that based on the, the evidence available all actions had been taken appropriately and the law and guidelines had been followed correctly. The coroner was also critical of Graham's GP practice who had not seen him since 2013 or recalled him for blood tests or issuing prescriptions since 2015. Despite his serious medical conditions, Errol needed the GP to try harder to see him. Well, you've got no hope of that. And here we go, the last part of this. A DWP spokesperson said that they refused to confirm that Errol Graham had a PIP claim refused refused to provide an update on the safeguarding review, refused to offer a justification for the 
department's safeguarding failures, refused to comment on the similarities between his death and that of other disabled benefit claimants, refused to say whether which senior civil servants and ministers would take responsibility for his death. They refused to say if DWP agreed with the senior civil servant who told the inquest the department had acted appropriately, refused to justify sending a highly paid barrister to the inquest and refused to explain how DWP was able to stop the ESA payment so quickly after the final safeguarding visit. He also refused to explain why the DWP had not apologised to the family of Errol Graham. Instead, the spokesperson said, this is a tragic, complex case and our sympathies are with Mr Graham's family. We take this very seriously and have referred this to our serious case panel, which includes independent members to help scrutinise and establish any lessons. Well, there you go. It's a big story. Big story in the media. And also, you probably won't hear it anywhere else. But it's a big story for last week. So I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget, give us a thumbs up and share the video. And also, if you're not subscribed, then click the button down the bottom and uh, become a supporter of the channel. And uh, watch out this week for some more stories. There are a few. So thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>